to see him land with the team, and it does continue to feel like the Rams are the heavy favorite. They continue to express interest. They want OBJ. He continues to seem like he likes that, but he has no reason to sign right now. He's still recovering from his torn ACL. He's not going to play until midseason. I wouldn't expect him to sign until he knows that he's signing ultimately with a contender. Madonna can sue another player that's out there on the free agent market still. Uh, you know, the scenario here with Sue, where I think that he's going to wait until probably training camp to decide where he goes. He said it'd be, quote, cool to play for the Raiders. He said that on our air, but ultimately it doesn't seem like that has manifested into any real interest from the Raiders at this point. That could change once training camp arrives, but for now, Sue also exploring his options. Another player that we can keep an eye on as training camp uh, kind of gets going here eventually at the end of this month is JPP. Now, JPP, another Bucks player along with Sue, is really going to do the same sort of deal. He visited the Ravens two weeks ago. Uh, ultimately, that didn't lead to a signing, but they'll continue to evaluate. A lot of times with these players, they get to training camp, they see what the position looks like, and then they feel like if they need to invest, they'll explore a guy like JPP or a guy like Sue. So ultimately, they'll land on teams. It's probably just a matter of when. Oh, yeah. JPP, Sue, any team would like to get those guys, especially at the right price. Thanks, Jeff. Meanwhile, speaking of guys who aren't playing right now, there's Gronk. He announced his retirement last week, and he immediately got to work post-retirement. Here's Gronk posting on this video on his TikTok, saying first day of retirement, getting his gritty on with kids at a football camp. Get him go, man. Life is good for Gronk. Jeff, I look at this, and I'm like, this guy doesn't need football. He's so happy. Do you think Gronk's going to stay retired, or could we actually see him back this season? I think we could absolutely see him back. I mean, Gronk also loves money, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> look, I, I, he doesn't, and, and he doesn't love training camp. So if you put all those things together, we can still understand why eventually, if Gronk decided he wanted to go back, he could. But, you know, it, this still is the type of scenario where it's not like he'd be ultimately having to go back to, like, Cleveland or Green Bay or Minneapolis, some cold weather city. It's Tampa, and he loves Tampa now. Uh, he's got family down in, in, in Florida and in Sarasota. So I, I just think that ultimately it would be very easy for him to return. So ultimately, yeah, I could very easily see him Gronk back with the Bucks at some point in this season. You Florida guys just love your Florida. I mean, what's wrong with Minneapolis, we do. Green Bay? It's like Florida's Nothing. paradise. Just freezing cold in the middle of December. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, if you're asking me. Ultimately, we, we that's the deal. I'd move further south, though, if I could, back. Brian. <laughs> What'd you say, Mike? I said, did we mention no state income tax? You know, oh, yeah, said that's that right. Gronk loves money, and why not take 7% more and play for Tampa Bay? That's right, that's right. So, Mike, do you think that he will stay retired, or what are the chances that he comes back? 100% he comes back. Oh. Tom Brady. When he says go, he says yes how fast and how high. And look, they don't need Gronk for 17 games, guys. They need Gronk in consequential right. moments. Third down red zone coming down the stretch. Maybe it's 15, 20 plays a game. Jeff brings up a great point. A lot of veterans don't like training camp. Gronk doesn't need it. But we need quality plays, not quantity plays. And he could be the difference of them being the Rams down the stretch. So when Tom Brady says, hey, Gronk, it's time to go, I have no doubt in my mind he'll be a Buccaneer. So you mentioned he could be the difference. Then it makes me think, how could he impact their Super Bowl chances? Because, look, it's a tough NFC. Tom Brady obviously came back to win a Super Bowl, but can he get over the top without Gronk? I think it's going to be really hard. I think they still have a really good team. I think an underrated storyline, Ryan, is Todd Bowles. I've worked with Todd before. He's a great coach, not a good coach. You think about a guy like Bill Belichick, struggled in Cleveland, takes some time off, becomes a head coach again. The rest is history. I'm not saying that Todd Bowles is going to be Bel Bill Belichick, but why not? Why can't he have a great second chapter as a head coach? This is a team that missed over 47 games on defense, so I think this team is loaded, and Gronk down the stretch only makes them that much better. Yeah, it's interesting what you're saying about Todd Bowles as well. I want us to put that graphic back up about the red zone. That was incredible because we're talking, yeah, what's that number that again, 48-0? Let's put that back up. 48-0, touchdown-interception ratio for Brady since 2020 with Gronk on the field. So, Jeff, look, I know they're friends. I know with friends, you're like, I don't want to be too pushy. But when push comes to sub, we know the NFC is going to be tight. Don't you think Tom Brady says, Gronk, you just got to come back. I, I want to be friendly, but you got to come back. 
I, you know, I don't think it's that different than, you know, you look at Odell Beckham. We were just talking about him with the Rams. Ultimately, you know, he's recovering from an ACL. Gronk is healthy. But it's sort of the same thing from the standpoint that these guys are at a point in their career where they can sort of wait through. We, we know they're known commodities. We know exactly what they are when they're at their prime. So if it gets late in the season, just like with Odell, when he evaluates the landscape at some point, and Gronk looks at it and says, this makes sense for me. And the Bucks say, this makes sense for us. Yeah, that could happen. I don't think that the word retirement in the NFL, as we have very clearly learned this year, is an end-all, be-all. It's not as conclusive as, as we might uh, otherwise expect it to be. So Gronk has retired once and came back. He will gladly do it again for the right price and the right incentive. There you go. The right price, the right incentive. You get to miss training camp. You get to miss all that practice during the season, and you still come back and perform. So, Mike, put a button on it for us. Can the Bucs win the Super Bowl without Gronk? I, I don't think so. I think they get close. I think Gronk puts them over the top. And let's learn from the Rams, Ryan. You know, they added a couple pieces down the stretch last year that were really helpful, like OBJ. So, to me, this is about how do we get back to the Super Bowl, being the Rams, and I think Gronk's a guy that could really tip the balance. So I like the Buccaneers a lot without Gronk. I love the Buccaneers with Gronk. Yeah, the Caesar Sportsbook gives Tampa Bay pretty good odds, but not quite getting there. They got Buffalo on top when you look at that. All right, guys, thanks so much. Well, coming up, wait until you hear what Draymond Green had to say about the possibility of a LeBron Kyrie reunion in L.A. And it's not all good. Trust me, folks. Got a jam-packed show for the All-Pro receiver. Previously requested a trade out of San Francisco, reportedly due to his desire for a new contract, along with some displeasure surrounding his role within the offense. But according to Jeremy Fowler, Debo has not backed down from his trade request. So let's bring in the guys to talk about this. Mike T, Jeff Darlington. And Jeff, you broke this story when it originally came up. Uh, set the scene for us first. How, how did this all develop and how did we get here? Well, honestly, Ryan, nothing really has changed since uh, I'd spoken to Debo Samuel and he said that he did want to be traded. And that was actually the result of the way negotiations for a new contract had begun. And not necessarily the numbers involved or the actual uh, monetary figures, but instead just kind of the conversations that were occurring between the 49ers and Debo that had led him to feel like, you know what, I just don't want to be here. And I know that there was optimism uh, expressed certainly by the fan base and partly by the team when Debo did report for mandatory minicamp, but he also was able to avoid some pretty heavy fines by attending that minicamp, which was ultimately the priority there. So for now, things remain the same. There's no new contract on the table, really, and there's no, uh, there's no real sense that Debo is any happier today than he was when he requested that trade. So we yeah. wait, and we see what happens at the start of training camp. And you make a great point about the fines. I think all of the 49er faithful were like, he's back, he's back. But then, of course, you avoid getting fined by being back. But still, Mike, I wonder, if you're in charge, if you're in Lynch's position, GM there, and you want to keep Debo in-house, and that's what everybody wants to do, what's your pitch to him? It's easy. We're going to make you fulfilled on the field in a great role for a long time. You're going to be paired with Trey Lance, and we're going to do great things together. And then off the field, economically, look, the market's pretty well set when you think about the Tyree Kills, the Devontae Adams. We kind of know where the upper echelon now is of wide receivers. Let's just get that deal done. From a jam perspective, Ryan, when you hit on a player like Debo Samuel, who's been so productive in so many different ways, high character, competitive, they never leave your program. So if I'm John Lynch, I'm talking about your role on the field, and I'm talking about economics, and I'm attacking both of them before the start of training camp. Okay, so you want all that to happen. Do you see the 49ers actually doing all of that? Because right now you could say, we're going to make you the highest paid wide receiver in the league. Do you see them doing it? Yeah, right. I don't know why they would. Trey Lance is the future of the 49ers, and I'm hard-pressed to understand how Trey Lance is a better quarterback without Debo Samuel. So this is about surrounding Trey Lance with as many good pieces as possible. You have a great player right in your building. Pay him. We know what the market is. So I don't know why the 49ers wouldn't want to get that done. Yeah, and, and then, Jeff, I, I look at the situation and I wonder, uh, he wants the trade. If he doesn't agree to whatever their terms are and doesn't want to be there, I wonder how willing the 49ers will be to make that move, to trade him, and what they need to get in return. It sounds like a very uphill battle for them. No doubt, and that's where this all kind of 
comes to a head. And, and it is unlikely from the standpoint that the 49ers don't want to trade him. And really, nothing has changed today since uh, really the first day of the NFL draft. And that was basically kind of the bridge here. If they had managed to make a trade at that point, uh, it would have made sense. They could have gotten the compensation that would have allowed them to then use those draft picks in uh, that draft. Now, if they were to make the trade, they don't ultimately even know how that team they trade with, that trade partner, finishes the season, thus making it unclear what that draft compensation actually would be. So it makes it even more complicated to get that trade done. And really, I, I don't know how it does. To me, this is going to get stickier before it gets cleaner. Uh, if they can get the contract done and make him the highest paid wide receiver, sure. Maybe that fixes it, but I just don't see it going down that road right now. I think this is going to get more complicated again. Ooh, very tough situation giving GMs like Mike T.